What is cooking, my friends? Back out in South Carolina on this gorgeous beach. Nice, bright, sunny day. It is cold out here, though. I know it looks bright and sunny and cheerful, and, and it is cheerful, but it is cold out here. I'm gonna go fishing. Ooh. Gonna go fishing on um, just from the beach. And maybe some crabbing, too. There's a little crabbing spot that I've discovered that we're gonna go to. And uh, anyway, got my cart all loaded up here. I rented this thing and uh, all loaded up with all my fishing stuff and the cooking stuff, too. Brought everything by the kitchen sink with me out here. We're just gonna hit the beach, do a little fishing, have some fun, and hopefully cook, uh, catch something that's worth cooking up. Look at that. It's part of a horseshoe crab shell. Looks like, looks like the armor of a droid to me from Star Wars. Anybody else? So you can see where the water, the line, the water line there, how high up it comes. It's definitely low tide right now, but the tide is coming in, so that's good. Out there, that white dot on the ocean is actually a sunken boat, folks. A 45-foot-long sailboat that somebody lost. A local told me it was a boat that was about half a million dollars, actually. We're just going to pull up right here, and I'm going to fish that boat out there. Got a nice cart full of stuff here. I'm really excited, folks, because anything really is on the table, literally. Um, I'm still new to this type of fishing, and so I want to try to catch and eat everything. I kept a cooked a stingray last time I was out here, uh, a shark before that, blue crab, and there are all kinds of other creatures that we could potentially keep and eat. Hey, puppy. Little puppy right there. There are all kinds of creatures out here that we can potentially keep and eat. So when I say everything's on the table, literally everything's on the table. All right, same thing as last time, folks. I've just got frozen squid. So after experimenting with quite a few different baits, I'm coming to the conclusion that squid is my favorite. Shrimp is really good, but shrimp flies off the hook. So that's just kind of a little tip for you guys. If you're out fishing like me, and you're just a tourist, you just fish from the beach, I recommend squid. And I just keep it real simple, a nice pyramid sinker. I did change up something. I have a wire leader on there though, because last time I was out here, something just bit my hook off. Probably a shark. And so I don't want that to happen again. And mom's away. And then on this rod, I have just way smaller setup, like a little small circle hook, little piece of squid, just kind of a little, just everything is a little bit smaller. And uh, probably won't be able to cast this as far, but let's see if we can get a little something in the surf here. Watch though, watch on the little rod. We're gonna get the biggest fish of the day load up on this thing. <laughs> That's usually how it turns out. All right, so we're just set up here. Both of these rods are bouncing a little bit because of the wind and the waves, but I'm just gonna watch, wait for one of them to really start going crazy. And uh, how you doing? good, are you? Oh, wow. That's a cool looking dog. Yeah, we'll say hi. Hey, you. You know anything about the, what is that float out there? It's a boat. Uh, yeah. Somebody, so uh, this is just hearsay from a local. Somebody got their boat, I think it was on a sandbar over there, stuck. Uh, Coast Guard, we need you to come rescue us. Coast Guard came out, pulled the people off. We'll come back for the boat. They didn't put their anchor out. Tide comes up, boat floats loose, crash lands here, and is stuck there. Damn. So, and now it's been several days since they've gotten out, so it's shimmied down into the sand. And so there, it looked like it might be, like the, it's it's totally, they have to like just break it apart yeah. to retrieve it. They can't retrieve yeah, it. No and, one got hurt though? No, no. Uh, yeah, I haven't apparently. Did you anything? I uh, know, I just started like, okay. like five or 10 minutes out here. So. Luck, Thank you. Getting a bite, folks, on this one. I just had something steal off that bait and I'm getting a bite. Got him. I think I got something small. Yeah, I got something small on this. Check it out, I got a small stingray. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. A little baby stingray. Nice. First catch of, oops, here comes a wave. First catch of the day. That's really cool. Little baby stingray. Oh, look at that, uh, yeah. You see that barb right there? That's what'll get you. So what happens a lot around here is people accidentally step on these 
while they're buried down in the sand. In fact, they'll be they'll just shimmy down in the sand just like you see them. And somebody's foot comes along, actually steps on them in their bare feet, and they'll just whack them with their tail. And so many people get injured in their uh, heels and on the sides of their foot from these guys uh, in the summertime out here. So that's one thing about swimming on the Atlantic Ocean in South Carolina that what does worry me a little bit because uh, that happens quite frequently according to some of the locals that I've talked to. Do they have any teeth? There you go, almost to freedom. Are there any subscribers out there who have ever been uh, hit by one of those things? That's one of the things I love about fishing out here is that I never know what I'm going to pull up. Last time I was here, I caught a stingray, then the next cast I catch a shark, the next cast I catch a whiting. And uh, there's like probably 20 different things I have a chance of catching out here. Well, folks, nothing else at this spot. So uh, we're going to go down to the beach and we're going to fish this point. It kind of comes to sort of a point up here. We're going to try around that. Lots of swirls and eddies and stuff in front of this spot. The current is really ripping through here. I mean, it's just, huh, this is an interesting spot that way. Oh, hey, ho, what do we have here? Is this, what is, is this just a blue crab? No, that's not a blue crab. Check it out. I hooked him right in his little claw there. What kind of crab is that? Is that? Folks, I scrolled through tons of images of crabs. Do not know what this guy is. Could somebody uh, identify that dude for me? Either way, I think I'm gonna put him on a hook. That has to be like amazing bait. I'm going to put this hook. Oh, he's going for me. He almost got me there. Through the side of his shell, just like so. You guys, I'm gonna kill this crab. I've seen people do this. You just crack their shell, just like that. So he's dead. And that uh, makes it where they don't bury down in the sand. And it allows, as, as kind of gruesome as it sounds, it allows the juices to get out into the water and those juices will attract fish to it. That's just what I've heard. Never, I don't think I've ever caught a fish on a crab before actually. So check it out guys, we got this bird here, a little sandpiper. He keeps hanging out. I'm gonna see if I can feed him by hand. Hey you! First let's get him a little closer. There we go, okay. See he likes squid. Okay, he ate that piece, he's coming back from me. Or she, whatever it is. Hey! Oh, you missed it. There you go. How about you just take the whole thing? You're fine. There we go, got a whole squid head. Not quite out of my hand, but... Oh shoot, something stole my crab off. Dang it. Dang it. Well. Folks, I think we got, we got something here. We got something. Dang it. We got something. Fish on, fish on, fish on. Yes. Oh yes, I've been waiting. It's been, it's been a little bit, ooh, this is something a little heavier. It's been a little bit since I've uh, had a bite. Uh-oh, I think I see a tail. I think it's another stingray, dang it. Oh yeah, it's another stingray. Shoot. Still pretty cool, that's a nice size one. Come up here. Nice. That is fun. Right, we're gonna flip him over. All right, I'm going to step on his tail, try to keep him under control that way. And grab the hook. Look at his mouth there. 
It's like cr pads, crushers, and small teeth. I think the Lord designed them that way so they could eat crabs and cr be able to crush and grind up crustaceans and everything that they find in the sand. Ooh, and it's tough too. Man, that mouth is tough. Woo, all right. Oh, you're so slippery. So slippery and slimy. I just got to yeet them out there. Like a big spiky pancake. There you go. That, that was a painful belly flop, I'm sure, but uh, we got them out there. Woo, slimy. Ugh. Like extremely slimy. This this rod is acting funny. Might be a crab on it. Unless there's a small fish on. I might have a really small fish on too. I don't know. Oh yeah, I do. Oh, it's a whiting. Or croaker. Whatever you want to call them. Well, there's some action. I went through probably about an hour, hour and a half and not much. And uh, then we got one of these. These are actually tasty fish. I'm going to keep this guy. This is the first thing we'll keep today. Nice. Oh. I have a new plan. There's this crabbing spot that I discovered while I was filming a members only video. I caught a couple of crabs there. And so we're gonna go to that right now and I'm gonna put out a few crab lines and then we'll keep fishing out here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, come over to this old palm log here and I'm gonna fillet my fish real quick because I need the carcass of this fish. That's gonna be our uh, crab bait. There's something satisfying about catching a fish, taking the meat off of it, and then using the carcass to catch crabs. Like, I don't know, it's just really cool. All right, and we have a nice fish carcass here. Lots of good skin and stuff like that. All right, we're gonna reel in our rods here. Luckily they didn't go anywhere while I was, oh wait, do we have something? We might have something on this. We have something. It was just sitting there. This might be a stingray if it was just sitting there. Oh no, it's another, wait, what is this? That's another whiting. That's a good size one too. So it was just sitting there. It wasn't even pulling or anything. We'll keep this guy too. You know, maybe use his carcass as a uh, crab bait as well. All right, we grab our cart, which is being taken over by the tide. And let's walk down here. Check this spot out, folks. Huh, why is there water? It's like a bunch of water that ran down. Huh. Anyway, this is a creek. So we got the ocean over there. This is a creek that flows out to the ocean, although it's floating this way right now because the tide's incoming. If you're members, of course, you've seen this creek before. I've caught a couple of crabs here. So, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, guys, I have a crab. I have a crab on. I have a crab, uh, a little blue crab. I was like, I thought I just had some weeds. Um, let's see. Dang it, I don't have a net. I don't have a net. Oh, he's, he's greedy. He's greedy. He's greedy. Can I get him? Yes! Look, guys, I got a blue crab. <laughs> Look, he's still hanging on to it. He's just purely, there. it's just pure greed. <laughs> Look at that. That's actually pretty darn cool. So we're back. We're gonna try to catch some crabs. If you guys want to become members of my channel to get to see extra videos, Oh, guys, we're being stalked by an alligator. He's right there. He's coming over. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Whoa, whoa. Look at him. Oh, my gosh, that is a huge, huge animal. Dude, no, he was going for my bait on the surface. Look at that, guys. Ooh, adventures in the south. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that guy. He doesn't know what it is. Huge. Make sure you guys, I'll put a link in the description below and in the top of the comment section for becoming members. It's a, a huge way to support my channel. It's only $1 a month. And you get to see extra videos. 
All right, so we've just got the whiting carcass on a hook there. I'm gonna throw it out in the middle of the creek. Blue crabs will just smell it come and come find it and hang on. And there's no trap or anything. They're just so greedy, they'll just hang on to it. Cast it right out in the middle of the creek there. That is all there is to it. All right, so I took both fishing rods and uh, put some bait on them, chucked them out there in the creek. And so hopefully, let's check this. Let's check it. Come on, crab aliciouses. Oh, this feels, unless we're snagged, this feels heavy, folks. Oh, we got, we got, oh, we got several crabs. We got several crabs on this. Are you kidding? Oh no, they all just let go. They all just let go. Here, let me drop it right back down there. Guys, we had, like, I'm not kidding. There were at least two or three crabs on there. All right, we're just gonna leave it. We're just gonna leave it right there. And they'll come back for it. We'll come back in just a second. Let me go check the other rod. Oh, shoot. You know, I should have been more patient. I should have been more patient with that last one. So we're gonna be, I'm gonna go a little bit slower with this one. This one doesn't even have anything on it. Shoot. What do you think, guys? I'm new to this. Do crabs hide in the reeds? Or, like, how does that work? You know what? Since I have one in this slack spot on this side, I'm going to throw one, like, kind of in the reeds there, and we'll see if that gets any. All right, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm actually going to cook that fish while we're waiting. Let's do that. That'll help pass the time. This is my makeshift table, since we have no, um logs or anything around here to make a table with. That's normally what I do when I'm out here is make a table, so to speak, out of uh, logs. I want to show you guys something though while we're waiting for the crabs to get on the bait. I received this from a subscriber in the mail. Not a subscriber in the mail. They sent me something and it, this came in the mail from a subscriber. Just don't want anybody to be confused there. So I got, I got a nice little letter, which I won't read out loud, but I got an excellent letter from them. But um, this is from Kat and, whoops, Kat and Jordan. These are all hand-painted watercolor pictures. Aren't those beautiful? Got the different trout there. I really like this catfish one. Those are so good. And then I'm guessing, Kat, you sewed this. That is so pretty. It's like a little Christmas ornament. I actually got this for Christmas. Thank you so much. And we have another letter here from Eli, a boy in Australia. It says, what is the best eating trout? Ooh, that's tough, Eli. Look at that picture of a trout right there. Please show this card on a video. And he left me a lure. You know, I'm gonna take that lure out right now and I will put that in my tackle box. Thank you, Eli. What is the best tasting trout? You know, brown trout are sweeter, but rainbow trout are what I'm used to catching. I would say I like rainbow the best, but brown trout are like fattier, are a fattier trout, that's for sure. There you go. Thank you, Eli. All right, folks, I wanna show y'all something really neat. I have my little makeshift table. It's not very steady. But you know what, we'll make it work. This is also sent to me by a subscriber. Bam. If you watched a video from this last summer where I deep fried crawdads, this was in one of the packages, but I never got around to using this because there were other seasonings. But this is Korean fire sauce. Oh, I love this little travel setup. See, it's not legal to make fires on this particular beach. So, no problem, I just bring my little burner. Our two small fillets, but, oh, what is that doing on there? Got some debris on there. And we got our fillets and we got the sauce. I gotta shake this up. Gotta be careful not to get this into my eyes. See, it's already on my finger, you see that? It's already the, the diabolical red color. Oh, looks like blood coming out. Ooh, ooh. Gotta make sure not to scratch my eyes after this. And then we will, I don't know why I'm using my little spoon here and trying to save on. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let's roll these fillets around in the fire sauce. All right, so while they are marinating in that, let's check our crab lines one more time. All right, you little monsters. Little monsters. Easy does it. Yep, there they are. Hanging on. Hanging on ever so gently. It's just, it looks like one. Hopefully this crab just stays on. Oh, why is he so cautious? He just let go. I mean, the last two would not let go. Oh, 
I will light my try to cook with all that going on. There. Adding just a smidgen of oil to the pan so the fish doesn't stick. All right, so we add. Oh, that's not hot enough. The wind is blowing away my heat. See, the wind, what happens a lot of times is the wind blows away my heat. So the frying pan can't get quite as hot as I'd like. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Son of a girl! Oh! It happened, folks. It finally happened. My luck ran out. My beautiful evening supper is no more. I just got kicked off the boat. Well, um... How? Oh. Yeah, I could just rinse these off. Little sand never hurt nobody. There we go. All right, nope. Folks, we're back in business. We just gotta clean everything off and start all over again before it gets too dark. Okay, no, I am determined to try my fish. All right, let's have a redo here. You know, I could use this as a table. Let's just use my cart as a nice flat table here. Um, if you're new to my channel and you're like, what just happened? I sometimes take some chances and balance my uh, <clears throat> stove on some pretty precarious places and uh, I've never had an accident till right now. Wait, this thing refuses to stand up today. There. Stand up. Ooh. Oh man. All right. Short of a little grit. We'll see. Let's see if I rinsed it all off. Short of a little grit, though, this should be good. You hear the snap, crackle, pop? That's what I needed, folks. That's what I needed. All right, we're back in business. I just have to check my crab line again. Oh, it's a little tiny one. All it was was a little tiny one that time. I think that other one's wise to us. Yep, definitely should have done this the whole time. Oh, you see the steam, the, you hear the bubbling. This is the proper way. This is what should have been happening. Most of our uh, sauce stayed in there. We'll just uh, keep it that way. You know, that's kind of weak sauce though. Literally weak sauce. I'm gonna add just a smidge to the top of them. It's just a smidge. Mm. <laughs> Better say a prayer over this one, especially. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I have literally new people watching my videos every day. I pray over every meal. It's not like when anytime something uh, that might be bad happens, I pray over it. It's just, it's a, a tradition. So, anyway. Here we go. Fire fish. Basically, I'm eating a fire hot with fire sauce, fire sauce fish. Hmm, there's a little grit in it. Hmm, that's good though. That's good. <coughs> that's really good. A little gritty, but it's good. It's like flaming hot Cheetos. If you stop, you really feel hotness. Wow. Oh man. Oh man. Just have a little bit of chocolate milk. I don't know if chocolate, if that helps. I may have overdone it just slightly. It's a really good flavor. It really is. I see why this is so popular, but it is. Now that's soothing. It is a little hot. It's good though. I really, it's a good type of spicy. I just need to add a little less next time. There's some grit in there, but it's so spicy I hardly notice it. Oh, nose is running a little bit. Woo. 
<laughs> Not supposed to be what a dish towel is used for, but uh, emergency situation. Well, folks, that is the way she falls sometimes. It's still a gorgeous evening out here. You just gotta keep, go out there, you just gotta come out, and you just gotta keep having adventures and trying things. And even when your fish does fall in the sand, or the hot sauce, you overdo it on the hot sauce or whatever, it still is so much fun just being out here. I mean, on a beach, enjoying this, uh, it still is amazing. I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys get out there and find your own adventures, even when they don't pan out like how you thought they would. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'll see you in the next one.